Welcome to the virtual League of Women Voters of Kitsap, South Kitsap School Bond Forum. Members of the audience, closed captioning has been enabled. The drop-down menu for captioning will allow you to pick the language of your choice. Tonight, tonight's forum is sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Kitsap, which is recording this event for later access. No part of this recording may be used for any purpose without the express written permission of the League. My name is Mara Louise Schmerfeld. I will be the moderator of this forum. The League of Women Voters, which celebrated its 100th anniversary in 2020, is proud to be a nonpartisan organization, neither supporting nor opposing candidates or political parties. The League operates at a local, state, and national level with over 1,000 local leagues. The League of Women Voters of Kitsap has been active since 1962. The League invites people of all genders who are 16 years or older to join. The League of Women Voters would like to acknowledge that the South Kitsap High School, uh, South Kitsap School District rests within the ancestral territory of the Suquamish people. Uh, we thank them and their ancestors for protecting the local land and waters for future generations. For those present on the Zoom feed, please turn off your cell phones or other noise producing notifications on your computers, etc. The public was invited to send in questions to the League's website and I would like to thank those who did so. If you still have questions after tonight's forum, we encourage you to ask the candidates directly. Their contact information is in the Kitsap County Voters Pamphlet that you should receive by mail, and the pamphlet is also available online at the Kitsap County Auditor's Elections website. We're here tonight to discuss Resolution 1367 of the Board of Directors of South Kitsap School District Number 402, which is listed as Proposition 1 on the ballot for the November 7th, 2020 general election. The ballot proposition reads as follows, capital improvement and school construction general obligation bonds, 271 million, board of directors of the South Kitsap School District number 40, 402 adopted resolution 1367 concerning a proposition to finance capital improvements for student safety and educational facilities. This proposition would authorize the district to construct a new Cedar Heights Middle School, construct a new Olala Elementary School, construct a new South Colby Elementary School, construct a new Explorer Academy and Discovery High School, renovate the South Kitsap High School, and make district-wide safety, security, HVAC, parking, and technology improvements, issue no more than 271 million of general obligation bonds maturing within 21 years, and levy annual excess property tax levies to pay for such bonds, as provided in Resolution 1367. A full copy of the resolution may be found on the Kitsap County Auditor's website. Speaking in favor of the bond, of the bond passing are Jerry Austin and Lee Fenton. Uh, I will call them the yes team. Speaking against the bond passing are Dave Kimball and Jeff Daly. I will call them uh, the, the no team. Uh, some overview of the rules. Uh, the purpose of this uh, discussion is uh, to talk about the merits of the bond issue, meaning specifically why the voters should or should not support it. The purpose of this discussion is not to engage in personal attacks or criticisms of individuals on either side of the issue. Using the time that has been specifically allocated for answering substantive questions to engage in that kind of personal attack or debate does not serve the public interest in understanding this very important issue. The yes or no teams will be given uh, one and a half minutes each to answer each question. The first question will pose first to the yes team, which is listed first on the ballot. I will then alternate, meaning the second question will then be posed for the no team and so forth. The countdown timer will be visible on the screen. If a speaker fails to notice that their time is up, I will announce time, at which point the speaker is permitted to finish their sentence but not start a new one. I will also not permit a speaker through the clever use of commas to launch a new thought in their continued sentence after their time runs out. A speaker with time remaining on a question may use it to speak about a previous question or a statement made previously. Because there are two members of each team, each team will be given a few moments to decide who should handle each question. The speaker selected will then raise their hand and I will instruct them to proceed at which time the timer will start. At the end of the forum, each side will have one and a half minutes to make a closing statement. The yes or no teams may split up this time between their respective speakers if they so choose. Crosstalk is not permitted. This means all remarks and questions by the speakers are to be directed to the audience or to me as the moderator. Speakers, thank you for stepping up to offer your skills and talents to discuss this very important issue for our community. The first question, as I said, is for the yes team. 
Proposition one asks the voters to approve or deny additional proposed spending for the South Kitsap School District. If passed, the amount each household would pay for the bond is based on their property valuation. Let's make sure we agree on the facts. How much is the bond going to cost a family that owns a $400,000 house? You want to take Sure. Um, That's Mr. Fenton, proceed. Hi, yeah. Um, the bond will be a um, uh, total, val total sum uh, of $271 million. That is, um, uh, will allow also 30 plus million dollars of state uh, funded um, construction dollars to be added to the pot for a total over 300 million, 271 of which is a responsibility of the community. That will be spread out in a bond um, over 21 years and it will be based on the um, property value of your, your home. And I believe it is a set amount that um, will be levied every year on as part of your property taxes. I believe that the sum is similar to the 2022 local tax rate and um, it will keep our local tax rate the same as last year. Um, as far as the exact specifics on the sum, um, I'm, I don't know that specifically. Maybe right. you do, Jerry. I've, I've heard rough estimates based on average valuation of about $500 a year. But as Mr. Linton said, it's uh, the same tax rate as last year. And that will decline as more parcels are developed and property taxes increase or values increase. Thank you. Okay, um, uh, for the against team, do you want me to repeat the question? You said a $400,000 house, is that correct? Yes, that was the question. I, I'm not sure we're really receiving your feed, unfortunately. What we did you, did you Have you begun answering? Uh, no, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer if, if you're hearing me. Okay, we're hearing you now. Let's start the time. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and start the time. I understand. There's, I was just looking for the clock. Understanding is that uh, uh, people have been talking around four or five hundred dollars. So we disagree that uh, because they're building more houses, the prices will go down. Theoretically, that should happen. But uh, with valuations going up, uh, just because it's spread along more people and more property, if your inflation elevates your house 5%, yours aren't going to go down. Uh, everybody's is going to go up 5%. So uh, we have a lot of building going on, but that doesn't necessarily equate to uh, rates going down. Our calculations show that if you start at uh, between four and $500 for a $400,000 house, that over that time period, yours are going to go up to about 750. So we are going to agree on that certainly taxes will be an issue and they certainly will uh, happen, but uh, we can't guarantee that just because more people are paying, tax rates go down. Thank you. Uh, the next question will uh, be for the no team. Uh, Mr. Mr. Daly, you're the only member of the no team I see on the screen, so I'm assuming you want to answer the next question. Uh, that's correct. Okay. The next question, how does or doesn't the bond as written address the needs of the public? So no one questions the need. Okay. There, everyone understands that it's been 35 years since something has happened. The issue is, is this the correct plan? Okay. And so we submit that this is not the correct plan, okay? In other words, uh, building, uh, rebuilding uh, South Colby, which is old. We re rebuilding Olala, which is old. Cedar Heights, which is old. We're not going to disagree that those need done. 
the issue is, is that the best plan? And does this address all the issues? What about the West? Everyone is talking about all of this um, construction and all these houses being built. They're all being built on the West End. Okay, so how is fixing Olala, which is a, a relatively closed community? In other words, I know the people that own a lot of the land out there. They're not selling. So if you take and put uh, a school for 297 and build it for uh, 400, how is that helping the community uh, if you can't uh, raise that? Uh, if you can't raise the uh, 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 enrollment at that school. So we don't see this as helping the community. Thank you. All right. Uh, for the four team, uh, sorry, the yes team, uh, uh, would you like me to repeat the question or do you want to go ahead? All right, go ahead, uh, Minister Austin. Yeah, I'll, I'll go right ahead here. Um, both Lee, myself, uh, Mr. Daly, and Mr. Kimball were all appointed to the Long Range Facilities Planning Committee. Uh, Mr. Kimball left after the first week. But we did an exhaustive look at the needs of the district, um, visiting every single facility in the district, every building. This team really came together after a string of bond defeats for a second high school out um, on the old Clifton property, looking at the holistic needs for the district and what can we put together that takes care of the immediate needs. Our community has been hung up on a second high school for decades. Uh, meanwhile, our buildings have fallen apart and into a state of disrepair. Um, our committee came up with an exhaustive list of projects that we felt needed to be accomplished in the future. Um, and then a follow on committee of uh, different stakeholders formed after that to take that large list and hone it down into the bond that you see in front of you today. Um, this is, it, it touches every part of our community. And, you know, to address the comment that all the growth is happening on the West, and I've heard this before, but me living on the East side, I see growth all around me east of 16 i think if you drive down sedgwick you see a lot of new developments i've, I've seen a lot um on woods road and mile hill and even stretching out as far as uh south worth and south colby so our area is growing um and i do want to use just the last bit of time here to address this this claim that as property values increase taxes increase they don't the amount is fixed as valuations increase it's still the same amount per parcel thank you the next question um, is actually for the the yes team, um, and and it's something that you've both touched on. But I'm going to ask you again because I want to hear more about it. Um, it both of you, both of the prior answers got into this, but um, can, can you help me understand how will the bond distribute resources across the district, and why or why is that not a fair distribution? Um, who wants to answer for the yes team? I'll take. It. Okay, Mr. Austin, go ahead. Um, this bond touches the communities of Olala, uh, the community of South Colby, and it replaces Cedar Heights Middle School, which is a middle school that's literally sinking into the ground uh, and is close to failure. Um, you know, between those elementary schools and that middle school, um, a vast majority of our students are benefiting directly from that construction. Second. And we learned this on the facilities when we've toured every campus. A big concern is drop off and pick up, pick up areas, especially in our elementary schools. Uh, this bond does allocate funding to look at each one of those campuses so that we can assess potential improvements. Um, it also provides for more uh, accessibility, handicap accessibility, emergency communications, safety upgrades, uh, HVAC replacements. Uh, this is something that will benefit everybody in the district, similar to the capital levy that voters passed back in 2018, that we're seeing the results of today uh, with tracks being built out at South Colby uh, and Sedgwick. And I did get news today that the pool has actually gotten a certificate of occupancy. So this is exciting and it is benefiting our whole district. With the last uh, time, I might just uh, address a couple other needs that are being addressed that are uh, really wonderful and something that the committee really supported. One of them is uh, early learning needs. Uh, there's going to be a, a part of the build out at both Alala and South Colby that will address that program, as well as uh, the Discovery and Explorer programs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, for the uh, no team, uh, would you like me to repeat the question? Yes, please. 
Sure. sure. Okay. okay. How will the bond distribute res resources across the district? Why or why is that not a fair distribution? Go ahead and start the timer there, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, fair distribution. So we all uh, we all went through the, we've got to have a new high school. The world is going to end uh, back in 2018. Uh, and there are 54% of the people still after four attempts wanted that high school. So there is nothing here that addresses the high school. We are addressing other schools. What about transportation? What about all of the other schools? I heard a comment about HVAC systems. We were given $23 million of COVID uh, money, ESSER money, to fix a lot of the HVAC systems. Uh, the district chose to spend it otherwise. So what happened to that money? What about the other schools? If this bond goes through uh, in 20 years, now they're all 60 years old. So what happened to the options of retrofit? What happened to cheaper options rather than bulldozing a school and then rebuilding, which is the most expensive option? Uh, we, I'll talk about financing at a later time, but how does this help the entire community? I don't see it helping the entire community. Thank you. Okay, the next question is again going to be for the uh, no team. Uh, how will the bond as written lead to a better education for Kitsap County students? And if not, why not? The question there is, do better buildings uh, equate to uh, academic success? Uh, no, they don't. Uh, a nice learning environment is certainly conducive. I taught for 15 years, but learning is done through instruction, teachers, curriculum. It's nice to have pretty buildings that the community can say, look at our elementary school, but is that going to improve academic success? No. Uh, what's going to improve academic success is a focus on academics, reading, writing, arithmetic, all of those types of things that all of us need for the future. So just because we're building new buildings doesn't mean, oh, we're going to have a big rise. Uh, yes, we do need to improve access into some of our schools and exiting. We do need to make some improvements. That's 35 years of neglect. No one disagrees with it. But there are other ways to do this. Other plans were considered and rejected. And just because uh, this was the plan doesn't mean it's the best plan. There are other plans available. We're discussed, but not moving forward. And we maintain that there are better ways to do this. Thank you. Thank you. OK, um, for the yes team, do you want me to repeat the question? Sorry? No. No. OK, go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Austin. Great. Thank you, Mara. Um, yeah, does facilities contribute to learning? Um, absolutely. On our tours of all the buildings, we toured a lot of uh, old Seattle public school portables that are literally falling apart and have inadequate electrical systems such that only one teacher can use an overhead projector and a pot of two classrooms. Um, so technology matters. Additionally, the districts had to turn down offers from the private sector for um, CNC uh, milling machines and things that our power cannot support in a lot of our buildings. Having uh, great facilities uh, strengthens the community pride. It makes this an attractive place to work and to live and will do nothing but um, increase um, the 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 quality of life in our community and I firmly believe that and our committee was very strong in that opinion um, with a little bit of time left we wanted to address that um, the nose uh, comment about not addressing the high school the high school is a big part of the bond um, allocation uh, the uh, modernization and expansion of the south 
portions of the existing high school will be a huge part of the project. Um, the Explore Campus, which serves K through 12, and the Discovery Campus, which uh, supports um, high school education, also will be big parts of the bond. Um, there will also be improvements at the high school level uh, from a facility standpoint. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next question again for the YES team. The last successful bond measure for the district was in 1988. Bonds are a form of borrowing and it's wise to be cautious about debt, but both public and private projects of any size usually require it. How is this year the right time or the wrong time to pass Proposition 1? Um, yeah, I'll Mr. Austin, go ahead. Well, it, I mean, it has been 35 years and our buildings are really in a, a shoddy state. Um, I think the district has been smart with spreading this bond over 21 years instead of 30 years because that does give us an opportunity to make more principal and less interest uh, in the long term. Um, the, the other thing that's different with this bond from previous bonds is it's far more comprehensive. Previous bonds were viewed as a step one as part of a three-tier plan. This is really taking care of all of the immediate needs um, today. And we're not, you know, trying to say, well, yeah, we're going to get this and we're going to do another one in two years and we're going to do another one. Um, it, it's really been intentional. And I think the board, even though I disagreed with them on this, um, letting the capital levy fully expire last year so that we could offer this bond at the same tax rate uh, was a good move. And it was an earnest move for ratepayers to keep that tax rate steady. Um, you know, it's it's kind of like buying a house. When's the right time to buy a house in your life, right? You're going to take out a mortgage and you know, you're going to be, be paying on it. Um, it's my opinion that this is something that we need and we do have a golden opportunity uh, with this measure, especially with the growth that our community is facing. Do you want to? I also believe that now is the best time because it's now not a year or two from now or three or four, depending on when we could approve it. Um, the cost just continues to go up as the future moves forward. So doing it sooner is always better. Thank you. Okay, uh, for the no side, uh, would you like me to repeat the question? Please. Okay, the last successful bond measure for the district was in 1988. Bonds are a form of borrowing and it's wise to be cautious about debt, but both public and private projects of any size usually require it. How is this year the right time or wrong time to pass Proposition 1? They are correct. There is no perfect time. Okay. However, in this case, you just had the fire department levy that was passed, and we're talking about record high interest rates. So all of the calculations that folks supposedly have done are not correct. Okay. So the problem with this is that we're talking 21 years. What's going to happen in 21 years to the rest of the district while this is getting paid off? Okay. There was a comment made about, well, we're not going to ask for another one in two years. There are other financing options available that can fix some of this. One of them happens to be uh, when we do uh, capital levies versus bonds. Doesn't have as much money and it won't take as leg, but you can retire those as they don't take interest. It only requires 50% uh, to pass and you can string those together and show the community that we can actually build projects uh, that don't go uh, $5 million over budget uh, on just a simple remodel. So there is a way to do it uh, and do it better. This is not the best way. It's the easiest, but not the best. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next question is again for the no side. Um, Historically, the state has not covered 100% of basic school capital construction costs, so local funds have been a percentage of those costs. Last month, the Washington State Supreme Court ruled that under the state constitution, the state is not required to cover 100% of basic school capital construction costs. How does that court decision factor into whether South, the South Kitsap bond should be passed? That court decision makes it even more, more important that K-12 
communities use alternative financing. So just because you can run a bond doesn't mean that that's the best way to finance it. Okay. I talked to a number of people in the community and there are other ways to finance. Okay. Everyone always goes to bonds. That's easy. It makes a big commission for the bond broker and it makes us pay forever and ever. And as we pay on this bond, then what's going to happen is the rest of the district that we haven't even addressed. This plan doesn't address, we haven't even addressed uh, uh, ROTC, any of the other facilities. We haven't talked about uh, transportation, food service, and eight, nine other schools. Okay. And they're going to age. So the sooner that you can finance this in a better way, and there are ways to do it, we've talked to people, then you can continue to get the rest of the, of the district covered. Otherwise, you're going to have a 22-year bond, another 22-year bond, another 22-year bond, and many people won't even be left on the planet uh, by the time we rebuild the district. Thank you. Okay, for the yes team, uh, would you like me to repeat the question? Could you please? Thank you. Sure. Historically, the state has not covered 100% of basic school capital construction costs, so local funds have been a percentage of those costs. Last month, the Washington State Supreme Court ruled that under the state constitution, the state is not required to cover 100% of basic school capital construction costs. How does that court decision factor into whether the South Kitsap bond should be passed? Go ahead, Mr. Fenton. Great, thanks. Well, it emphasizes the need, it emphasizes the uh, responsibility of our community uh, if they feel this is a good plan to step up and uh, contribute towards it because no one else is gonna do it for us. We want our community to be the best community. We want our schools to be the best. We have to step up and support, but you just don't step up and support a plan just because it's out there. You you look at the plan and this is a plan that we should be really, really excited about as a community. It's different than anything we've seen in my lifetime here at South Kitsap. It supports education at every level from early learning all the way up through high school level, facilities at each of those levels, facilities that are in the greatest need at each of those levels. And, um, you just emphasize that the court has has stepped up and said, no, you were, we're not going to fund education 100 percent. It's the community's responsibility. And I, I that's how it's been for me in my career. I'm a school architect and I've seen communities that don't step up and support and it puts them in a spin cycle that's that's really challenging as time goes on. The time is now we're overdue to um, to um, step up and rebuild our infrastructure. And that's what this bond is about. Okay, um, another question. This one would be for the uh, YES team. Um, there have been mentioned a few times of uh, alternate finance financing means. Um, why, why, were the, why are those financing means not um, preferable, any of those means? Um, to the bond me method um, that, that we're discussing tonight. Uh, Mr. Fenton, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Um, again, my career has been spent um, assisting school districts throughout the state of Washington, um, provide plans for communities to build schools. And the overwhelming majority, if not 100% of the um you know uh big bonds which would be anything over you know in, in the in the magnitude of that we're looking at are always uh supported with um uh obligation bonds that um go out to the community it provides the means and the access to funding to have a a, a legitimate approach to completing major projects in a timely fashion to string out a multiple number of projects back to back to back with multiple levies would be impossible to conceive of and impossible to implement because you wouldn't be able to have the assurance 
of the next project until your project completed and then you went out to the voters again. You, If you're gonna do a big improvement, which this bond is a big improvement project because the need is so immense, you you would have to conceive of it in, in the, the vehicle of a, a school bond. It's the only uh, reliable and manageable way to do it. And responsible. Thank way. you. Mr. Uh, Mr. Daly, um, you were, uh, you had gotten maybe two words out um, in, uh, in response to my question. So I'm gonna give you the full uh, minute, 30 seconds to respond to it. The question on the table that I think the recording will um, will pick up and we'll pick up with your answer. It's the one I just asked. Um, that is what makes the, um, why, why is the bond uh, means of finance um, not preferable to the other, um, other potential means of financing um, the improvements that are at issue here? Whenever you're ready. Okay, yeah, let me go ahead here. So on any amortization schedule, you're going to have a time whenever the interest and the principal are about the same, okay? And that's somewhere on a 20-year bond is somewhere around eight years. So to get rid of almost uh, at this rate, uh, $271 million is going to cost uh, right around $490 million to pay it off. What we're trying to do is get rid of a lot of that interest. So you want to try and refinance the bond or start another bond around seven or eight years. So if you want to run a 20-year bond, you're going to have to pay it off. Why can't you do a lot of the financing that has been done before and run that bond for about seven or eight years and then start again on other projects? The comment was made that uh, other financing options will not allow you to complete the projects. Maybe so. How about if you just like do two schools, finish those, two schools, finish those, two schools, finish those, two schools, finish those. Okay, it doesn't have to be a big chunk and then we wait a whole long time. So why don't you start small, use other financing options, which could be, and there's others, but besides that could be uh, where you just need to use 50% for a capital levy and then finish that project shouldn't take six or eight years to build a school and do that. I'm sorry, I ran out of time. Okay, Excuse that's me. okay. Thank you. All right, the next question sorry. will also sorry, be for, that. that's okay. The next question will also be for the no team. Um, uh, the next question is, uh, would passing the bond allow the district to qualify for additional state money, for example, construction assistance? And if so, should that be factored into the voters' decision? That's already been uh, that's already been factored in at 271. Uh, Mr. Fenton uh, discussed the fact that it's going to amount to around 30 or 40 million dollars. The problem with that is none of the nothing. None of this is guaranteed. You have to have the money up front and you pay back OSPI, the SCAP funds, as they're called. So you're going to have to have the money up front. It's a reimbursement reimbursement program and using the 271 and the 30 to 40 million dollars uh, that uh, is going to come along uh, isn't guaranteed. So what happens if uh, we only get half of it because the construction fund isn't full? Or what happens if there's a change in the uh, you know everyday legislature policy? So going out and saying we're going to get guaranteed 30 or 40 million dollars on 271, uh, I don't believe that's uh, prudent. I operate off of guarantees. You know, if there's a 90 percent chance that that's going to happen, uh, that might be good enough. But that's too far out, given the way that the, you're going to do four or five schools. So there's no way to tell. And they're not just going to drop them in on school by school. Okay, they're going to come as a group at a certain time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, and Mr. Austin, uh, same question. Yeah. Shall I repeat the question? Um, 
Yeah, thank you. I was waiting for the timer to start. Uh, okay, you can go ahead and restart it. I don't want to take more than my time. All right, go ahead. You can start the timer now. All right. Um, yes, this bond, if we pass this bond, we will, will receive $36 million in state matching funds. And the way that the State Construction Assistant Fund works is this is money that we're all already paying on our property taxes that goes into a pool for construction assistance. So this is money that taxpayers are already paying here that we cannot take advantage of. Uh, if we pass this bond, we'll be able to tap into that pool. In our schools, by the sheer nature of all of them being more than 30 years old, all qualify for this funding. Um, you know, Mr. Daly paints another apocalyptic scenario of doom and gloom where we're the only people left on the planet and funding changes and, you know, the, the state does weird things. These are appropriated funds and the, the funds are established by law. So I don't think it's really accurate to say that we wouldn't get this money that we've all paid into and has been written into law. Lee? I think enough has been said on that. It's a it's it's a no brainer to not take advantage of um, state allocated funds. If you're bucking up for if you're asking your community to uh, pay, you know, full freight to, to take advantage of every opportunity that you get from the state to assist. That's just a no brainer. Um, and it would be actually irresponsible to not do that or to not consider that as a, a big, big advantage of um of going out for these bonds thank you okay for the uh yes team uh a recent study by economists from yale stockholm university and the public policy institute of california entitled effectiveness and efficiency of school capital investments across the u.s looked at the impact of school capital projects on student learning and the real estate market nationwide and concluded that essentially not all investments affect student test scores or local property taxes equally. How are the investments that would be funded by the proposition expected to perform? Are they aimed to increase test scores, property values, or both? Go ahead, Mr. Austin. I think it's interesting how that question's phrased that all projects yield a result. I think there's plenty of examples of districts in other areas of the country where they're nice to have. Um, what I can tell you in our district and the work that our long range facility planning committee did is we look at the needs in this district. The fact that teachers have to share power distribution. Uh, there's really no question that that will impact student learning or adequate lighting or adequate temperatures. And most of all, the safety and security of our students. I've heard stories from some teachers that when they've had a lockdown and they're in a portable with middle school kids, the kids have to use a trash can as a bathroom. Um, mm -hmm. You know, having students comfortable in their mm -hmm. facility, having them safe in their facility, uh, of course, that's going to have an impact on their well being and their ability to learn. Um, second, you know, bond does address a uh, dedicated space for technical and trades education, which is really a cool thing that we have going on in our high school. So this provides opportunity for all students um, to explore their interests. And it, it, I mean, it's, it, yeah, I, I think the question's a bit of a setup to say that every single project um, has a result. We're talking about this bond in this community that our facilities planning committee spent 16 months developing. This is the most well-researched and thoughtful bond that I've ever seen. Okay. So, and I want to be clear, I'm not trying to mess up the timing, but my question, in case you didn't hear it, was the, the study concluded not all investments affect student test scores or local property taxes equally. Did that, did I make that clear? And not all investments equally Affect affect student, not equally. all investments affect student test scores or local property taxes equally. That was my question. And I, I, based on how you answered it, I'm not sure that my question came across. Uh, yeah, I haven't read the study, so I, I can't really comment on on that. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you that the measure, measure that we've put forward will definitely have an effect based off of the work that we've done. Um, okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, uh, for the no team, uh, uh, same question. Uh, are the investments that would be funded by the proposition expected to perform, are they expected to increase test scores, property values, uh, neither or both? First of all, I want to make sure you can hear me <laughs> before I started. Can you?
Yes, go ahead. Okay. All right. There is no, there is no way. I taught at the high school for 15 years. I'm the only teacher here. So to say that uh, a new pretty building or a new paint job or a new anything is going to increase test scores is incorrect. This district has poured for new roofs, new tracks, new everything, and we are of the five uh, in the, of the five school districts in the area are of the seven. We are fifth. So test scores are not rising. And it doesn't matter whether you say neither of those in the state or the nation. It doesn't matter. We're talking about our community. So making an investment based on is it going to raise test scores? Uh, what's going to raise test scores is teaching and learning. OK, that's what's going to raise test scores, whether it's a pretty building. I used to teach in one of those pre-World War II uh, portables that they're talking about. As kids learn. They adapt. People adapt. So if you have a pretty room, does that mean we're going to learn better? No, not at all. If it was, then all the new paint job, carpet, everything we put into our buildings would have already resulted in wonderful improvements in our students' achievement. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, I wanna thank everyone for um, uh, participating. It's time for closing statements. I'll give you guys a moment to uh, sort of get that together, um, especially considering we've had so many, uh, unfortunately, interruptions with the technology here. Um, the st closing statements will each be the same amount of time uh, 1.5 minutes. If uh, if you choose to split up that time, that's up to you. Um, but again, uh, the 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 statements will be limited to uh, the same amount of time. Uh, we're going to go again in the order that the the issues are listed on the ballot or the positions are listed on the ballot, and that means that the yes team will go first. Um, so, who would like to speak for the yes team? Okay, Mr. Fenton, whenever you're ready. Great, thanks. Um... As a community member uh, and a longtime resident and school supporter, somebody who is in the profession of assisting school districts um, to prepare and be successful with bonds, this to me is an exciting opportunity for our community to step up and to really support a, a really solid plan that affects every corner of the district, every grade level of the district, and every community. It's a, a smart plan and it's a well put together plan. It's not building pretty buildings and and making um, a curb appeal the top priority. It's about functional and appropriate needs being met that aren't being met at our facilities right now. We have we have dire straits in many of our facilities and this bond addresses the most urgent needs district wide. It it addresses big scale needs by replacing schools and it also addresses smaller scale needs by uh, appropriating funds to the bit to the most urgent needs spread around the district. Uh, that are not the, the big billboard projects. This is a great bond uh, and, a, and a great plan for our community. Thank you. Okay, um, for the no position, proceed. Okay, so for 35 years, uh, if everything was an imminent, we're gonna all uh, have a, uh, as Mr. Uh, Austin said, apocalyptic thing in the district, that hasn't happened, and not a lot of people have been excited. Otherwise, the uh, high school would have passed. There's no guarantee that new buildings are going to help our academic improvement and, and our academic success. Uh, so what's the plan B? Uh, what's the feasibility? Uh, there's a lot of issues with these sites. The district has not built... Uh, in 35 years, and all types of uh, building codes, ecology codes, all type of stuff has changed. And just because we studied it for 16 uh, months, 
uh, does it mean that that's the best plan? That is a plan. That's the plan. There were other plans. Why are we not uh, offering the community a choice of plans that they'll support instead of saying this is the plan? None of the fire marshals have said we're going to close your school down. None of those things are happening. School will open tomorrow just like it had did today. And we can wait on time until we have the plan that everybody wants to agree on, not just this is the plan. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Speakers, once again, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to join us this evening. Uh, Well-informed electorate is critical to our democracy and events such as this forum are one way to achieve that goal. Voters, hopefully this forum has helped you decide how to vote on Proposition 1. Ballots for the November 7th election will be mailed out on October 20th. The League is encouraging voters to vote early and return their ballots as soon as possible, preferably to one of Kitsap County's ballot drop boxes. Their locations can be found on the Kitsap Auditor's website. A link to the recording of this forum, as well as links to several candidate forums held here, either in person or via video in Kitsap County, will soon be available on the League of Women Voters of Kitsap's website. Please encourage others to view the forums, including this one, and vote. Thank you very much, and have a good night.